everyone i am dr dipika malik today we'll start with a new chapter of bioanalytical techniques that is polarimetry polarimetry is a sensitive non destructive method for measuring the optical activity exhibited by the inorganic and organic compounds a compound is optically active if it rotates plane polarized light that is light whose wavelength oscillates or vibrates in just one plane non polarized light waves oscillate in all the directions many chemical compounds can exist in more than one optically active form each optically active form or isomer of a compound will be able to rotate the plane of polarized light to the left or to the right by an amount characteristic of that isomer polarimetry measures the extent to which a substance interacts with plane polarized light and whether it rotates plane polarized light to the left or to the right or not at all the number of degrees and the direction of rotation are measured to provide the observed rotation this measurement of the observed rotation is compared with the already published values which in turn helps in the identification of an unknown compound polarimetry it is an instrumental analytical method used for measuring optical rotation that is the angle through which the plane of polarization is changed of polarized light by optically active or chiral substances as a measure of their concentration in a solution polarimeter is an optical instrument used for measuring the angle of rotation of the plane of polarized light as it passes through an optically active substance optical activity chiral molecules rotate the plane of polarized light this property is called optical activity therefore they are called optically active optical rotation the angle by which the polarization plane is rotated is called optical rotation it is measured in degrees with a polarimeter the measured angle of rotation depends upon many variables the type or nature of sample example sugar solution concentration of the optically active components the length of the sample tube the wavelength of the light source or the temperature of the sample chirality to be optically active a compound inorganic and organic must have a chiral center a carbon with four different groups attached basically an asymmetric carbon depending on the orientation of these four different groups about the chiral carbon the compound may rotate plane polarized light such compounds are called chiral molecules chiral molecules are characterized by their property to rotate the plane of polarized light the amount of optical rotation is determined by the molecular structure and concentration of chiral molecules in the substance Chiral molecules are typically organic molecules and biomolecules such as sugars, starch, flavors and essential oils, active pharmaceutical ingredients, amino acids, DNA and other various molecules. The mirror image of chiral compounds cannot be superimposed with the original. Compounds that do not rotate like at all lack a chiral center and are termed as achiral objects. The mirror image of achiral compounds can be superimposed with the original as you can see here in the diagram. Why are chiral molecules optically active and achiral molecules not? A molecule that has a net dipole moment will rotate plane polarized light. Such molecules that is chiral molecules have an electric field. The electric field vector of the chiral molecule interacts with the electric field vector of the plane polarized light and therefore rotates its plane. Just for revision, net dipole moment refers to the overall moment of electric charge within a molecule resulting in the establishment of an electric dipole moment. An electric dipole moment occurs when there is a separation of positive and negative charges within a molecule creating a positive end and a negative end. The dipole moment can result from various factors including differences in electronegativity, molecular geometry and the distribution of electron density. Specific rotation a common standard for comparing optical rotation. Specific rotation is a property of a chiral chemical compound. It is expressed as the angle to which the material causes polarized light to rotate at a particular temperature, wavelength and concentration. The specific rotation of a molecule is the rotation in degrees observed upon passing polarized light through the path length of 1 decimeter at a concentration of 1 gram per milliliter. 
to convert an observed rotation to specific rotation divide the observed rotation by the concentration in grams per milliliter and the path length in decimeters specific rotation is determined at a specific temperature usually 20 degrees celsius and a wavelength of light source usually sodium lamp with d line at 589 nanometers the right side shows the formula for specific rotation where alpha denotes specific rotation in degrees c denotes concentration l denotes path length in decimeter and alpha observed shows observed rotation now coming to the working of a polarimeter a polarimeter consists of a light source polarizer sample tube an analyzer and a detector to measure the rotation angle light from a source vibrates in many planes such light is called unpolarized light the unpolarized light is then passed through a polarimeter a polarimeter has got two polaroid filters the first one is called a polarizer and the second one is called an analyzer when unpolarized light passes through a polarizer the emerging light vibrates in only one plane and hence it is called polarized light the other vibrations are either completely or partially cut off so the diagram here shows the basic optical setup of a polarimeter the polaroid filter of the analyzer is rotated through an angle of 90 degrees such that the analyzer filter is now perpendicular to the plane of polarized light resulting in no vibrations passing the analyzer and we see darkness in the eyepiece darkness only exists when the analyzer is exactly perpendicular to the plane of polarized light now if the polarized light is passed through an optically active compound kept in the sample tube then the plane of polarized light rotates either to the left or to the right and hence light is observed in the eyepiece now we rotate the analyzer till we see darkness again in the eyepiece this occurs when the analyzer is perpendicular to the plane of the rotated light this helps us to measure the optical rotation angle polarimetry measures the rotation of polarized light as it passes through an optically active fluid the measured rotation can be used to calculate the value of solution concentrations especially substances such as sugars peptides and volatile oils there is a direct correlation between concentration and optical rotation as concentration increases the number of molecules possessing chiral properties also increases resulting in greater optical rotation the next slide shows the components of a polarimeter that includes light source polarizer sample tube analyzer and detector so the main thing to note in this diagram is that polarizer and analyzer are always placed perpendicular to each other now let us discuss all these parts one by one light source yellow light that is d line from sodium lamp is used in a polarimeter because it gives monochromatic light and also gives high energy output normal monochromatic light contains light that possesses oscillation of the electric field in all possible planes perpendicular to the direction of propagation Nowadays other light sources such as xenon and tungsten halogen are also used with appropriate filters because these light sources offer advantages of cost long life and broad wavelength emission range over traditional light sources polarizer it converts the unpolarized light beam to plane polarized light light is unpolarized this means that each light wave oscillates randomly in one spatial direction to convert unpolarized light into polarized light polarizing filters are used a polarizing filter transmits only light in a certain polarization direction and suppresses the light of other polarization directions light which has passed through a polarizing filter is called polarized the polarizing filter is fixed in a specific rotation sample tube a sample tube holds the sample that is chiral analyte which is to be measured if the substance is optically inactive the plane of polarized light will not change in orientation and the observer will read an angle of 0 degrees if the compound in the polarimetry cell is optically active the plane of the light would be rotated on its way through the tube the observed rotation is a result of the different components of the plane polarized light interacting differently with the chiral center analyzer is a rotable polarizer whereas polarizer was fixed but here analyzer is in rotating state
The analyzer is used to observe the polarized light and to determine the degree of rotation. Polarizer and analyzer are set in an angle of 90 degrees towards each other which means that no light reaches the detector that is 0% transmission. Depending on the type of instrument, the analyzer is rotated manually or automatically until the maximum intensity of the light falls on the detector. The detector is positioned at the opposite end of a tube containing the optically active sample and the user uses his or eye to judge the alignment when least light is observed. The angle of rotation is then read. Coming to the applications, polarimetry is used as one of the most important quality control methods in the following industries, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, food and beverage, sugar, aromas, fragrances, essential oil industries and research, many more. Pharmaceutical industry, determining enantiomeric purity. Polarimeters are crucial for pharmaceutical companies to determine the enantiomeric purity of chiral drugs. Enantiomers are mirror image isomers of each other and it's essential to ensure that the correct enantiomer is present in drug formulations to achieve the desired therapeutic effects. Quality control. Pharmaceutical companies use polarimeters to monitor the consistency and quality of chiral compounds during drug synthesis and manufacturing. Concentration determination, polarimetry is used for the determination of the concentration of sugars as an ingredient of pharmaceutical agents. Substances analyzed, sugar, amino acids and proteins, blood serum, vitamins, steroids, antibiotics, hormones, painkillers, amphetamines, etc. Chemical industry, identifying chirality. Polarimeters are used to determine whether a compound is chiral or achiral. This information is vital in understanding the behavior and properties of compounds in chemical reactions. Characterization of new synthetic substances. In reactions involving chiral compounds, polarimetry can be used to monitor the progress of the reaction and formation of new chiral products. Purity control and concentration determination also can be used in chemical industry. Substances analyzed include biopolymers, synthetic polymers, glycerin aldehydes, various hydrocarbons, etc. Food and beverage industry. Quality control. Polarimeters are used to assess the authenticity and quality of natural products like honey, sugar and fruit juices. Determine concentration and purity. Certain substances like glucose and fructose exhibit optical rotation and their concentrations and purity can be determined using polarimetry. Substances analyzed include lactic acid, starch in food and feed, lactose in milk, glucose in wine, sugar composition in honey, carbohydrates, raffinose, fructose, levulose, sucrose, natural monosaccharides, maltose and xylose. Polarimetry can also be used in determining the sugar concentration in raw materials, preliminary, intermediate and end products. For monitoring of chemical processes, example during the manufacture of invert sugar. In purity control, samples analyzed include sugarcane, beet pulp, molasses, refined sugar, syrup, invert sugar, etc. Manufacture of aromas, fragrances and essential oils. Polarimetry can be used in quality control of raw materials and additives, in monitoring of the production of intermediate and end products. Substances analyzed include essential oils such as orange, lavender, lime and peppermint oil, glyceric acid, aromas and perfumes for the food and cosmetic industry. In research, research applications for polarimetry are found in industry, research institutes and universities as a means of isolating and identifying unknown samples separated by high performance liquid chromatography that is HPLC, structural determination. By analyzing the optical rotation of compounds, researchers can deduce the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms and molecules aiding in structural determination. Evaluating and characterizing optically active compounds by measuring their specific rotation and comparing this value with the theoretical values found in literature. Investigating kinetic reactions by measuring optical rotations as a function of time. Monitoring changes in concentration of an optically active component in a reaction mixture as in enzymatic cleavage. 
analyzing molecular structure by plotting optical rotatory dispersion curves over a wide range of wavelength, distinguishing between optical isomers, kinetics of cane sugar inversion, mutual rotation of glucose, and determination of the concentration of polysaccharides through amylolysis, that is, conversion of starch into sugar by enzymes or acids. Other fields include environmental analysis, monitoring pollution. Polarimeters can be used to analyze pollutants in water, air and soil samples. Certain pollutants can exhibit optical rotation which can be measured to determine their presence and concentration. Educational laboratories teaching chirality. Polarimeters are valuable tools in educational laboratories to teach students about chirality, optical activity and principles of polarimetry. Medical and clinical diagnostics, measuring glucose levels, polarimetry has been explored as a potential method for measuring glucose levels in blood non-invasively. Changes in optical rotation can be related to glucose concentrations. So with this we have completed the principle and applications of polarimetry. Thank you for watching.